Hello and welcome to another episode of Interactive Biology TV, where we're making biology fun. My name is Leslie Samuel, and in this episode, episode 18, I'm going to be talking about agonists and antagonists. It almost sounds like a plot for a movie, but it's not a movie unless it's a movie happening inside your body. Anyhow, for today, let's get into what we're going to be talking about the first thing we're going to talk about is what is an agonist? And an agonist is a molecule that mimics the effect of a neurotransmitter. So it does what that neurotransmitter would normally do. An example of that would be succinylcholine mimics the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw again. I'm going to draw the receptor here. And here we have the cell membrane of the neuron and I'm gonna draw it a little different than I've been drawing it before I'm gonna have this as the receptor sites this is where the acetylcholine normally binds to the nicotinic receptor I'm gonna draw acetylcholine here but I'm not gonna draw it coming here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw something that's a slightly different uh, let's just say it's a different color but it has a similar shape as acetylcholine and we're gonna call this succinylcholine when that comes here and it binds to the receptor same thing here comes and it binds to the receptor the channel opens which is what it would normally do if acetylcholine binds and then uh, sodium ions on the outside end up coming inside the cell so this would be an example of an agonist. It's not acetylcholine, it's something else, and uh, let's say in this case it's succinylcholine, and that comes, binds to the receptor, and causes a similar response. That is an agonist. Now let's look at what an antagonist is, and you can probably guess just by reading the word, but an antagonist is a molecule that opposes the effect of a neurotransmitter. So it does the exact opposite. And an example of that would be curare, which is an antagonist to acetylcholine that can actually block the binding sites for acetylcholine. So here we have our nicotinic receptor again, and it's in the membrane of the cell. And here we have the binding sites. And out here, we have acetylcholine that wants to bind. However, we have something else that's around that's not exactly like acetylcholine, and let's say that its shape looks something like this, and that binds to the receptor, and what that does is it blocks the receptor site. So acetylcholine wants to bind, and it wants to cause that channel to open, but it's being blocked so that it cannot bind and it cannot open the channel for sodium to come in. This would be an example of what curare does. It's an antagonist. And in fact, curare can cause muscles to become paralyzed because they cannot be activated and sodium cannot rush into the cell exciting the cell and exciting the muscle to contract. So that can be a serious thing if you have curare uh, binding to these receptor sites. That's really all for this video. I hope you understand the difference between an agonist and an antagonist. If you have any questions or comments about that, go ahead and leave them below. I'll be happy to answer your question and maybe even make a follow-up video answering your specific question. That's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.